Hi, I'm Eric Wolf with the International Car Wash Association. Today, a lot of people are bringing up the subject of going green, both in our businesses and in our homes. We're seeing increased efforts to find alternative fuel sources, a resurgence in the importance of recycling programs, and even Hollywood's getting into the act, making movies focusing on global warming. So what does that have to do with the professional car wash industry? Everything. Here at the International Car Wash Association, we've been out on the road checking out reclaim systems and how they help operators make their washes more green, all while helping them save some green. Check it out as the International Car Wash Association takes you to the cleaning edge. So Charlie, let's talk a little bit about why an operator would choose to put in a reclaim system and let's just begin by breaking it into a, an operator that's coming into the industry with a new location and then an existing operator. What are a couple of reasons that an operator coming into the industry would take a look at reclaim? The, probably the most common reason that someone would need to have a reclaim is their municipality is going to require them to have one for their wash. Secondarily, a lot of times a municipality, especially one that has an overwhelmed or overworked water or sewer system, may charge a tap fee or an additional charge for a car wash application. You would want to try and cut down on that or mitigate that by means of reclamation. And you can mitigate that tap fee because if you use less water, the, the cities will typically give you a kind of a credit for using less water and reduce the tap fee. Correct. Now the municipalities are getting smarter about that. It used to be you could just help tell them you're going to use a reclaim, show them your equipment, never turn it on they are now checking that and coming back and saying, okay, you do owe us this much money because you did not reduce your sewer demand. Okay, now when we get into an, both a new investor and an existing operator, what are some of the reasons, a couple more reasons that both of them may look at a reclaim system? Operational costs, uh, we can save you money if your water and sewer bills are high enough, the reclamation of water will save you some dollars on that. And then of course, there's, you know, it's important to be environmentally responsible. If you can be environmentally responsible, as an operator, you can put up a sign that says you're environmentally responsible. In addition, there's some areas of the country that you want to use reclaimed water on because they charge you for the affluent. How much of that water leaves the reclaim and goes into the sewer and it's another way to save money. That's true. You know, the other thing is the, I still have it in the lobby. The old study by Texas University. Yes. Uh, when it comes to 35 gallons or typically or less for a car wash uh, to facility for each unit, and it's 120 or 30 gallons that somebody would use uh, in, their park, in their driveway at home. Right, that's the comparison of fresh water use in the driveway Absolutely. per vehicle versus the professional car wash business where we're trying to maximize everything we do and by maximizing everything we do we minimize the water consumption. And it's something that we can tell our customers with pride about. It's like right now Florida is in phase four of our drought. It's the worst drought we've ever had in South Florida. We spent a ton of money putting in a reclaim system. Right now the South Florida Water Management District allows car washes to use 75 gallons per car. We use less than 32. And we're not doing anything different because we're in drought. It's because we invested in the reclaim system and that's what we do per car. If you just put it in up front, it tends to pay off in the long run. Differentiating yourself by having both a product and the people surrounding it that are significantly a step above the competition. Charlie, let's talk a little bit about design, and if we could, we'll break it into a new to industry location and then an existing operation. What are some of the design elements for a new to industry location? Municipalities are typically going to require them to have a separator for the oil and the sand. It's usually a holding tank of some design with a wall in it. Uh -huh. 
multiples of those tanks are typically what is required by the industry to use for holding the water to allow the solids to settle, the oils to float, so that we can draw the best water, recycle the water to the wash. Okay. And in terms of an existing operator, what are some of his considerations in either putting one in or getting one done? Well, again, he's typically going to have been required originally to have such a tank. It is not uncommon to find a number of operators who've installed the tanks that they would require overall. They're concrete septic tanks, local, locally available, not, in, not terribly expensive often to have those tanks already in place, and that's a benefit. And now if they're not in place, what does that uh, operator have to do? Well, hopefully he, ha hopefully he has a nice wide spot in his asphalt driveway or a grassy area that he can dig up and put some tanks in. Okay, and if I can't dig them up and put them in, what do they have to do? Well, then we're looking at above ground tanks, but then you're looking at storing water in large holding tanks, typically 3,000 or, or more gallons above ground, and those tanks are bulky. Okay, so essentially what we're talking about is tanks to settle the water out, well, first through a sand oil separator, tanks to settle the water out, a draw line going back to the car wash to send the reclaimed water back to the car wash, and an overflow that's going to go to sanitary sewer. That's correct, and you've pretty much described the tanking design. So. Okay, fantastic. And then in terms of water usage, how, how many tanks, how do you figure out how many tanks you need? Well, you're going to figure that out based on what your equipment's going to use. In this application here, we look at the tunnel and we say that these pieces will use this much water. We determine, for instance, in this application, we're going to use roughly 90 to 120 gallons a minute. Now, in a on-demand system, your system has to be able to process that much water at that rate and deliver it to the wash at a pressure the wash can use. In a um, batch system? Batch system, for instance. In a batch system, you would have to be able to process that water and have enough of it in holding for that demand. Okay, I understand. And then the reclaimed system that is sold to the given operator is just big enough to process that much water. Correct. So you just marry it up. Correct. Can we go take a look at a reclaimed system? Yes, we can. Let's do that. All right, Charlie, we've made our way down, and my understanding talking with you is that they've got five 1,500 gallon tanks buried here Correct. for a total capacity of 7,500 gallons. Correct. And we've just lifted the manhole cover off of the last tank. What do you call this tank? This is a suction tank. This is where we're going to draw the water out and deliver it back out to the wash. It's also, you look over here to the, to the left, you can see the white pipe. That is the pipe going to sewer. And that is the overflow. And the gray lines under the suction lines. The gray lines are the suction lines. Correct. Why gray is gray. this tank a little bit deeper than the one we just were taking a look at a minute ago? Well, because water has to flow downhill to get to the sewer. Ah, so you're setting the tank level you mentioned a minute ago. That sewer depth has to be slightly higher than this tank. Correct. So we're going to gravity feed to the, the sanitary sewer. line. Correct. So we've got to start a little higher on the other end, gravity feed to here, and then gravity feed the sewer line. It's, yes, you do have to start a little higher. Water will seek its own level. So for it to go out to the street, it has to run downhill. Okay, great. Let's cover this guy back up and take a look inside. All right. All right, Tyler, we're in the back room now. Yes. And uh, actually right behind us is the reclaim system that I believe your company provided. That's but correct. It's pretty typical of reclaim systems that we see out there, right? Yes. And uh, what kind of some basic elements of this reclaim system, you know, filtration or pump systems that, that go into a reclaim system? Well, you're going to have to have some means to get the water out of those previously mentioned holding tanks. We use a lift pump. This particular one is five horsepower. It'll pull up with a three-inch suction line. It'll pull up 120 gallons per minute. The processing, as far as it's processed, is, is done either with a filter, cyclonic separation, some kind of means to take out the solids and the dirt that is still left in the water. Uh, we actually use cyclonic separation down to five microns. Okay. So now, out there in the settling tanks, all the heavy stuff's falling out. That's correct. And as it's gone from the first tank, you have most most of the heaviest stuff. Right. Second tank, etc. So you have small particulate coming back in T here. Typically, in the last tank, you're going to be looking at a particle of about 150 micron. Okay, and you're taking it out in those various separation means. Correct. Now, once you've got that then filtered, you're just sending that right back to the equipment. In, in a, a system that is a on-demand, as ours is, that would be what you would do. In a batch system, we would process this water, put it into another holding tank, and then would draw out of that holding tank with another pump system to deliver it to the wash in a batch type system. Okay, some of the reasons operators have stated in the past they don't want to use Reclaim, you know, what, what are some? I mean, I've heard various ones. What have you heard? Uh, usually that the water doesn't smell very good, um, which is very polite, and <laughs> sometimes it stinks really bad. Uh, this particular system, we use an aeration and ozonation system for that purpose. We are, as you can see, the unit is running even though there's no cars in the wash. We are recirculating 12 to 18 gallons per minute. That water recirculating is drawing ozonated water back in and, 
and delivering it back into the holding tank and recirculating that water as well. So two typical methods in the industry that a lot of the various water reclaim system companies use is ozonation, which is injecting ozone, ozone into the water, right. and that helps kill the bacteria? Yes, yeah, so it helps kill the bacteria, it helps bleach out the color. If you're using a lot of triple foam in the wash, uh, your water will typically be that dominant color, either a black, cherry, red, gray, or a green. In okay. our application with the ozone, you help take that color out. And then the, actually moving the water or recirculating the water keeps it moving and, and retards bacteria growth as well. Correct. The anaerobic bacteria will grow in the, in the absence of oxygen. So if you're moving that water, you're helping to oxygenate the water. The ozone obviously helps with that as well. And that will help keep down the anaerobic bacteria, which gives you that hydrogen sulfide or rotten egg smell. So in terms of making a selection on that, it's really between the vendor and the operator, what they're trying to accomplish, what method they want to use to reclaim the water. It sets those prices within that range, how much they're using. Well, probably probably the single most important thing, in my opinion, is, is do business with a company that has local representation, somebody that you can talk to, someone that you trust. If you don't, if you're not comfortable with a guy that's going to come fix it, I mean, I can sell you anything you want, but I'm not always going to be here. The guy that's locally that does the work is a guy that needs to be the, the well, most that, important factor. In that case, that vendor should also have local knowledge on compliance issues Absolutely. and what works best and, Absolutely. you know, what difficulties they run into locally. Well, and also, that's going to help a lot. The manufacturer of the equipment should be able to help with that as well. I mean, he's certainly going to know more than what's in your local area. He'll know what he sees in the country. Certainly should be able to speak to the operation of the city and the, and the planning commission or whatever and explain to them what they see. A responsible operator is going to take a good hard look at, at his particular application or his site and start planning now for the future and speak to your distributor, speak to your car wash manufacturer. Um, and find out what the best direction for your particular application is. But I would start thinking now about what you can do for your environment, what you can do for your wash going forward.